What's up guys? My name is Neil and welcome back to the basics of ethical hacking. This is the second episode of our series where we try to explain in the most simplest of terms the different techniques and definitions within the world of hacking. Continuing from our episode one, make sure that you already have those two files downloaded. For those who are not sure what I'm talking about, head back to episode one, watch the whole thing in order for us to follow through this video. So let's just head right into our computer here. Now I'm just gonna go to the two files that we downloaded. Mine's in the downloads folder. Yours could be in the downloads folder as well, or depending upon where you saved them. Okay, now before we install anything, we first gotta check if our Windows is actually enabled for virtual virtualization. Sorry, get my tongue tied. So to check that, we head to our command prompt. If you're not sure, just click on the Windows logo, type in CMD, and type this command, systeminfo.exe. What's important here is the Hyper-V requirements. The second option is what we're looking at. The virtualization enabled in firmware, it says no. So if this is your case as well, you're gonna have to follow through with me. If not, and it says yes, then you can skip through. But for those who has no, we're gonna be activating our virtualization through our BIOS. So as you can see here, sorry for the shaky footage. Depending upon your laptop's manufacturer or your motherboard's manufacturer, you're gonna have to search how to access the BIOS. In this case, mine was just spamming the delete. Now using the directional keys, I'm gonna be heading to advanced and just going down to Intel virtualization technology. I'm gonna hit enter and enabled. I'm just using my directional keys here if you're wondering and I'm doing the same for VT-D. What VT-D does, it allows for our virtual machines to have direct access to our input and output hardware. In this case, I've already set them to enabled. I'm gonna be using the directional keys again and head to the tab, save and exit, save changes and reset. I'm gonna hit enter and yes. So now we have reset and we're booting back to our windows. So now we're back in our windows machine, but first we're gonna to have to double check if what we changed in the BIOS actually reflected. So we're going to do the same command in CMD, systeminfo.exe. So as we can check here, now the second option now says yes. So that means we're all good. I'll be explaining later as to what relevance adjusting those settings have. But for now, we're going to install our virtual box. And as if with any other software that we usually do, keep spamming next. If you wanted to change the directory, go ahead and do so. But in this case, I'm just gonna be continuing with everything, just leaving it default. We're gonna leave this check to start Oracle once it's done installing. And once we click finish, VirtualBox should pop up. Now let's get right into it. Press the new button right here and a small window will pop up. All right, from here in the name tab, we're gonna type in Kali Linux because that is the operating system we want to install. And the machine folder. Now I'm going to be recommending doing this, but I'm changing my machine folder to a folder that is on a separate drive. In this case, my hard disk drive or drive D. And I'm going to be placing my virtual machines in a folder named virtual machines. So we can have a compilation of all our virtual machines where they're all accessible in a single file. I already had a Kali Linux installed, so I just deleted it and I'm just gonna make a new one. Kali Linux 2019, just for us to be able to distinguish the difference. And yes, click into that folder. Now we're gonna head to type, make sure it's Linux and version. In this case, it's Debian 64-bit. Now, if we weren't able to change the BIOS setting earlier, we are only be able to install the 32-bit operating systems, and it won't allow us to install 64-bit. 
In this case, since my PC is 64-bit and we were able to activate the Intel virtualization technology, we're now able to install 64-bit operating systems. But in the case of your PC is only capable of running a 32-bit host operating system, then that's all you're going to be able to get. So once I click next, I'm just going to be adjusting the RAM dedicated for this virtual machine. In this case, the recommend is 1024, but I'd like to give it a little leg room. Virtualization takes up a lot of resources, so make sure you have enough RAM. So I'm giving it 4 gigs of RAM, but it could be anything past 1024, the recommended memory size. Next, you just keep this default, create a virtual hard disk, VDI, dynamically allocated. And now I'm just going to be adjusting the file location and size to 20 gigs, although the 8 gigabytes is what's recommended. I just like to give it a little leg room. So before we click start, we're going to head to settings and just adjust a few things first before starting system and head to the processor tab. We're going to give it at least three processors. So give it a, lo a little speed, enable the PAE and make sure those two are checked. Our video memory, we're going to give it 128 MB, but you don't really necessarily have to. For M the storage, sorry. We're going to be now clicking here and we're going to be clicking our ISO file. In this case, mine is in the downloads folder and click open. All right, once that's done, just hit OK and click start. I'm going to be opening the Kali Linux, putting it on full screen. So. Here we are. So before we start, take note, once you click on the Kali screen for the first time, it's going to give you a notification. This just basically means that once you click on the Kali machine, or what we would say the guest machine, your mouse cursor will disappear because guest machine or the Kali machine is currently using it. If you want your mouse to go back to the host machine or your Windows machine, just click on the right control key, which is basically what the notification is saying. So it will do that every time you try to click into the Kali machine to make sure you don't forget, but you can just click don't notify me again. So we're going to head straight to our graphical install using our directional keys and hit enter. We're just going to select our language, in this case English for me, and for the country, I'm going to be typing Philippines. Continue and Philippines still. But if you're not sure guys, you can always just click default, which is English. And for the country, United States. And we're just gonna let it install here. For the host name, I'm gonna leave it default as Cali, but in this case, I'm just gonna be changing it to Neo. You can change it to whatever name you wish. And for domain name, we don't have one, so leave it blank and hit continue. This is quite important for the root password. Root user is basically the system admin or the administrator if you're a Windows user. So for root password, please, as much as possible, try not to forget the password because it's quite difficult to reset the password. So in this case, I just clicked on the show password in clear for us to see the password and not forget. Don't, no need to use this password, okay? But I'm just doing it for example's sake. Making sure we didn't forget our password. Hit continue. And for here, we just click most of the defaults. So first option, just hit continue. Second one, hit continue again. And same thing here, use the one for recommended for new users. And then hit continue. And here, don't need to touch anything, just hit continue again. And for here, we click on yes. 
saying that we are ready and all is set. Now it will be installing the machine or the operating system. This will usually take a while so I'm just fast forwarding for time's sake. So once it's done, installation is complete, hit continue and it most likely will reboot. Once it's done rebooting, we're now introduced to the Kali Linux login screen. So now we're going to log into our root account. In this case, it's root with all low caps and enter the password that we entered earlier. In my case, it was password. So welcome to Kali Linux. All right, we're going to get right into it. We're going to try and install the Oracle VirtualBox guest editions, but mine was running to an error. So I'm just going to be installing it manually by downloading it manually. You can follow through with the link if ever you receive the same error. The latest version would be 6.0.8 for this virtual box. So I'm just going to be downloading its guest editions. Once it's downloaded, just head to the containing folder, right click and open with disk manager. This prompt will come up saying run and then upon clicking run, a terminal will pop out and it will just be installing. Just don't touch it and wait for it to finish installing. You'll know when this prop comes out, it says press return to close this window and hit enter. Then we're just going to be restarting our machine. So as we can see, once it reboots, that the screen is now close to our local resolution. So it's no longer that little square. So as we can see here, everything's fine, but for good practice, we will first use the apt get update and upgrade commands to make sure that our Kali Linux machine is the latest and greatest. Once that's done, we're just gonna be testing the full screen here. And there we go. We now have Kali Linux. So that's all for the second video guys and in the next video we'll finally be learning how to use the Kali Linux terminal or the Linux terminal and all of the basic commands that we'll be needing in order for us to interact with the operating system and the different tools that we'll be using in the future. It's going to help us a lot. So God bless guys and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button in order to be notified on our next videos or any other updates that we may have. Also, check out our website and our Google app, Hakuna Anti-Hack. It might help you a lot in helping secure you, your family, your friends, your co-workers, whoever it may be. Help us in our goal to spreading cybersecurity awareness around the world.